Well, welcome to the after show on today with Dr. George Grant. Uh, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. I, I absolutely love that we have this episode now to be able to share right. and communicate these things. And so, first of all, I want to say as we start the after show, if you're watching this right now, it's because you guys partner with us as a church. You make everything that we do possible, and that means so much to us. Mm-hmm. So we're so very thankful for you guys. Some of you guys have been with us since the very, very beginning. And everything that you see coming from Apologia Church, the teaching arm of our church, the outreach, the evangelism, it's made possible uh, because of because of you, mm-hmm. because you partner with us as a church. So first and foremost, thank you very, very much. Uh, it means so much to us. Um, we wanted to do just a little bit of an after show here with Dr. Uh, Grant while we have some time. Um, Dr. Grant, thank you again for being with yes. us uh, today on the oh, show. My joy. Thank you for writing these books and for all the stuff that you've done. Thank you. You've really impacted my son and my family. And so we're just, we are very, very thankful for you. Uh, Dr. Grant, you ended, I think in the perfect place. And I'm so glad that I, I already knew what you were going to answer and how you're <laughs> going to respond to that, but I'm glad that you did. You talked about the answer is at this point, uh, the proclamation of the gospel. And I think that's so important because you mentioned this void where the church mm-hmm. sort of steps away from culture and doesn't speak the truth into culture. And so Margaret Sanger leaps into that and just does uh, so much devastation. Um, And so here we are now with the result of a lot of her labor and many other people and the things that she uh, was was able to get into into effect. Um, And we have 60 million dead babies behind us and counting. Uh, 3,000 babies a day are murdered in our nation. Planned Parenthood is killing about 1,000 of those babies a day. Um, And we often see people in the pro-life movement, Dr. Grant, do just what you said. They'll say things like, we just need to convince people uh, biologically that it's a human Mm -hmm. and then they won't want to kill it. Or they argue statistics or they talk about, you know, uh, cleaner abortion clinics and widening the hallways. Uh, They talk about, you know, that's sort of like, you know, let's let's attack this in a way where we take a backdoor approach. And I'll just mention quickly, Dr. Grant, that uh, last year I was able to get an interview with the vice president of National Right to Life. Um, and he said explicitly in that interview, um, and he wasn't at all ashamed of it. This right. is just their perspective. He said they don't want to call it murder, right. and he said they want to take a backdoor approach and not use Christian language. They don't want to use the word of God. Uh, they just essentially want to convince people that it's biologically a human. Can you can you speak to that? Because from from my perspective as a Christian, as a minister of the gospel, that that's not going to accomplish enough to where we change human hearts, where people. Um, and the Bible says, those who hate me love death. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Romans well, 3, my, go ahead. My, my <clears throat> question always to somebody who makes that argument is, well, how's that working for you so far? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, here, we, here we are, an entire generation has gone by as we've made that argument, as we've tried the incremental approach. And hey, I'm, I'm grateful for any incremental approaches uh, that uh, that that we achieve, I'm not satisfied with them, right? And I'm not going to put my effort and the energy into those things. Yeah. But I'm I'm not going to despise the day of small beginnings, right? I, I appreciate the, the a step by step approach, but uh, in American history, we actually have had a successful pro life movement in the past, in the 1870s okay. and 80s. <laughs> and 90s, Interesting. when abortion was legal, uh, when there were a, a flourishing abortion trades, when um, uh, peddlers were taking abortifacient pills uh, all the way to the, to the Pacific uh, from manufacturers in Ohio and New York, and a pro-life movement arose, a coalition of uh, politicians, lawyers, doctors, and pastors, led by the pastors, um, starting with uh, Brick Presbyterian Church in New York City uh, and a very, very prominent pro-life newspaper in New York City called the New York Times. And Uh, together, they transformed the whole picture of medical practice in the U.S., created the American Medical Association, banned abortion, and banned all kinds of other um, lewd and manipulative uh, medical practices, and it was it, it was forthright, and it was unapologetic in proclaiming the gospel from the start. Hmm. That's the only time we've seen a successful pro-life movement in the history of the United States. But we don't have to stop there. We can go back through the age of Christendom. 
whenever the horrors of abortion, infanticide, uh, sarte, um, you, you know, human um, sacrifice, any time that that has been overcome as a cultural norm and banned altogether to, to the point that it, it was altogether taboo uh, has been when the gospel has been proclaimed. Mm. Yes. The gospel is the only possible answer. Yeah. Wow. So, so I think you hit the awesome. nail on the head there, uh, Dr. Grant. How, how important is it that this starts with the churches and, you, as you said, with pastors? Yeah, it's got to start from, from the pulpits. It's got to start from the way we understand the scriptures. It's got to start from the way we understand what our legacy as Christians are. Uh, it's got to start with our understanding of what missions actually is. Uh, and it's, it's got to start there or it, it's a non-starter. Mm-hmm. So if, if, if we put our trust in the political process, in one more Supreme Court judge and yeah. you know, a host of other things that, you know, the incremental steps that are taken in state legislatures, which, again, I'm, I'm grateful for, for any uh, halt to the bloodletting. Yes. But, mm-hmm. but that's not an answer. Right. That, that's, that's merely a step along the way toward the actual answer. Yeah. So if we're going to have the answer, it's got to start in the church. Mm. And it's got to start in a local church that's small and simply is faithful in proclaiming the gospel and changing one life at a time, one disciple at a time, going forth into the world uh, to to affect their arenas and disciplines one at a time. That's the way it's always done. Praise God. Amen. Wow. Wow. Yeah, and we agree, Dr. Grant. Yeah. Uh, obviously, we're all very, very grateful for every child that God saves through some incremental legislation, but it's it's in terms of principle, right? Like, if, right. You, if you just fight for that in terms of principle, well, then you're losing the whole battle because you're just losing the message. Mm-hmm. You know, what's actually right. happening? We're murdering children. Right. And, you know, and... I was, and go ahead. I was asked one time by the, by the Speaker of the House of the state of Tennessee... Uh, if uh, a, a particular measure that they were uh, fighting for, and uh, I was asked to to come and speak, and the, the question was, uh, Dr. Grant, it, will you now be satisfied? If we pass this piece of legislation, will you be satisfied? And my response was, oh, no, of course not. <laughs> it's one step along the way. Mm-hmm. It's a right step. It's a good step, but it's not a sufficient step. Mm-hmm. Right. This is just the start. That's right. That's right. Well, praise God. <laughs> we're grateful for you, Dr. Grant, and we, we're looking forward to doing a lot more with you. And I just want, I want you to be encouraged. I know that you, uh, you're always very busy and you do, mm-hmm. you do so much work and you've invested so much of your life in the kingdom of God and education and, 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 and proclaiming the gospel and telling the history of God's providence. And I just, I just want you to be encouraged. There's so much of your work that has affected us, affected my own family personally, and God is using to change the world, brother. So keep, yep. well, thank, keep fighting. Thank God bless you. God Lord bless you, brother. Mercy, church have courage. That's right. That's right. Amen. All right. We'll hope to talk to you soon, brother. Bless you. Thank you so much. God bless. All right. Well, hey, fantastic, right, guys? Yeah. So there you go. So that was Dr. George Grant. Amazing. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. We're going to do what we can to get uh, the information from, from this into... Um, the hands of, uh, of as many people as possible and before yeah. as many people as yes. possible. Encourage you, truly encourage you guys uh, to get Killer Angel. Uh, you can get it at kingsmeadow.com. You can, of course, also get it on Amazon. Uh, it's, it's not a very, very big book, so it's not overwhelming. Uh, my son Sage, he read it. He said it was very, very good. Hey, hey what, do you, what about that situation with the pro-life movement in the 1870s, yeah, no. 80s, and 90s? I didn't know that. New York Times? What's up, New York Times? American Medical Association? Sounds like the New York Times needs to repent. Sounds like Christianity <laughs> has changed your world, right? Hey, what, but amazing. here, Okay, can I just, let's just finish with this thought. How crazy is it that we're always talking about that? We're always talking about, like, you have Oxford, Cambridge, Yale, mm-hmm. Harvard. Now you hear about the New York Times, American Medical Association, all like the work of Christians right. mm-hmm. in history, right? Mm-hmm. And you go, what in the world happened? Because mm-hmm. now you don't see the New York Times as the bastion of things pro-life and Christian, right? 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 And um, But, but th- th- this is, these are gifts that Christianity, the church, gave to the world. Right. And look, and the, where we're at now is this complete 
revolution has taken place, all these institutions that the church built uh, taken over. Right. And I, I think that just that says so much. And I, and I hope, I hope, I do hope, I hope in some measure, what God is do, doing through ministries like Dr. Grant's and Apologia Church is, is, is really planting those seeds. And I, and yeah, I, I do think we're starting to see the buds, like little things like coming out. And right. That's my I hope. I think even just, um, I think that those little first fruits are even just us uh, considering it a worldview right. issue and not attacking just the issue. Because, well, Dr. Grant said it very well that she had a specific worldview yep. that she was propagating. Yep. And um, I think it was in, what was it? She would release this little publication. I think it was called The Woman Rebel. Mm -hmm. um, and a very popular slogan that they would use in that was... Um, no gods, no masters. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a great representation of her worldview. Yeah, wow. and the, fe the um, feminism that currently exists. Right. Yeah. And so that's, I mean, that is the world we live in today. No gods, no masters. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, right? There's obviously some subtleties to that we could get into, but right. we don't. But obviously we don't subscribe to that mm -hmm. worldview. Mm -hmm. We would say one god, mm -hmm. one master. Right. right? Mm -hmm. So like that's right. where the issue exists. Of course, there's all these little. Right offshoots of what's really going on but right. like that's the big thing yeah. with margaret sanger is yeah. she managed to get this worldview mm -hmm. going and we don't have to we don't have to abide by that worldview we right. don't yeah. believe it it's right. not it's not true <laughs> so here's something that brings me encouragement because you know there's just no question i know what god says he's going to do in the world i know mm -hmm. it says that jesus is going to win and i know that no one can thwart god's kingdom and his sovereignty but, you know, you have to confess to the taxing element of it all when you look around you and you see a culture that just betrays so much of, of our history and the mm -hmm. work of the gospel that happened here. And you see just so much just evil. I mean, all like, right. did, 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 you see, did you see today the thing that David Daladine released today? Yeah. Um, oh, the yeah. new video? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's just horrifying. Right. I, first thing right. I woke up to this morning, I see that. I play that video and I'm just, I, I, I honest to God, like I don't always get tears in my eyes, but I got tears in my eyes. I was like, I can't believe I'm watching this. And that's the result of, of the work of a woman like this. Yes. Right. right? But yes. here's, okay, so my point is, is like you look at it and you go, oh my goodness, this monstrosity. Like it's horrible. And it, it, it is, it, it does take your breath away sometimes. Yeah. You're like, how in the world are we going to overcome this? But I just want to say, I do consider at times that you look at the work of someone like Margaret Sanger and other revolutionaries like her, and the truth is, is that you are able to completely transform a culture within a generation. Right. Now, here's my, here's my point. If it can happen with unbelievers mm -hmm. in a generation right. so quickly, mm -hmm. then it certainly can happen with the truth and the work of yeah, the gospel in the true. church. It can happen, but it has okay. to start. Absolutely. So it's like that, that moment in the interview just now with Dr. Grant where he says... Um, you know, she's doing all this stuff and like it's revolution, it's sexual revolution, it's eugenics, population control, all these different things. Like, and she comes into it and he just mentions it and then there's the void of the church. Mm -hmm. The church just like goes, oh, I'm not, yep. not going to say anything, not going to fight. Like I'm not really going to get into this and really resist. And that's, I mean, that's a huge problem because look at the weakness of these arguments. Terrible. Like yeah. is there any rationalization for Margaret Sanger being a hero? No, no. there's none other than well, we're just going to kind of act like she didn't do a lot of stuff. Right. Like, that's such a weak argument. Right, right. Like, that's not an argument at all. All right. it would take is for someone to say she was not a hero. Right. She wasn't. Nope. Right. She wasn't if great. If you want to believe she was, okay, but you're deluded. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And, you know, we have heroes. We have real heroes. Mm -hmm. and, and she is celebrated all the time. Hillary Clinton, that's my hero. Every year the award. Um, Which I just don't and, understand. Is there like some shortage of reproductive rights heroes? Like why could, they well, can't no. find anyone else no. other than a racist? Well, no, it, and it's, it's interesting. Like now that you mentioned it. She was friends with Nazis. Shortage. <laughs> well, it's like, and, and it's, so we'll talk, we'll finish. I guess we'll finish with this thought. So I'm reading this book right now by uh, Dr. Willie Parker. He is uh, the most famous abortionist in, in the world. Um, he says in his book, he sees as many as 25, 30 to 50 women a day. He travels from like Alabama, uh, Mississippi, and Georgia. He's an itinerant abortionist. And so he goes back and forth. Well, this is his book. It's like, a, like 130 some odd pages, life's work, a moral argument for church choice. I think I'm thinking about doing a response to it called Life's Dirt. Um, and... Uh, 
Anyway, so Cecil Richard, Cecile Richards, president of Planned Parenthood, gives the plug for it. Um, uh, Gloria Steinem, uh, just and, and they're like, it's such a wonderful book. I wish everyone in America would read this book. Of course they all do. And it's, Those let me people. just say, it's horrible. <laughs> it's horrible. It's poorly written. The guy is a narcissist. Uh, he's just praising himself throughout the book and he thinks he's a martyr. And, and these are their heroes. These are their heroes, this, this guy. Right. I've listened to hours of the man uh, talking now and, um, and these are their heroes. And let me just say right now, they're not giants. Mm-hmm. They're not. Yeah, no gods, no masters mm-hmm. does right. not play out yeah. long term. Right. It doesn't look right. great. Yeah. <laughs> Here's really a guy doesn't. who's killing babies every single day by the dozens mm-hmm. and uh, he doesn't have a... He doesn't have a coherent argument. It's not compelling. It's not. It doesn't draw you in. It's not exciting. Uh, he's just a guy that um, has he has the ability to be very erudite, um, and he's soft spoken. Uh, he, he's a good looking man, handsome guy, salt and pepper beard. You know, older guy in his fifties, black guy, uh, and and so they go. Oh, there's a guy that can represent us. Here's a guy that murders babies on the daily, right. and he seems so pleasant like in winsome and so there's our hero right Mm -hmm. and he's just he's awful and not impressive let me just say it (laughs) right what's funny you joy you mentioned like a shortage of right you know and and remember the second to last video that dale had released they were at the george tiller like memorial dinner right you know here's a here's a guy of abortions that was uh murdered and so they had a memorial dinner for this guy who you know, like Willie Parker was one of the most famous abortionists and mm-hmm. it's just yes, so backwards. Right, yeah. and them being a hero is reliant right. on people just pretending mm-hmm. a bunch of stuff doesn't happen yeah. or ignoring bad arguments. I don't know. Like, what constitutes a hero these days? You agree with me. You tell me what mm-hmm. I want to hear. You're my hero. Right. That's not a hero. That, like, that's right. Even, that's exactly right. Even literally speaking, the word does not mean like you just agree with you say what I say. You do what I want. <laughs> it's an echo chamber. So uh, right. you're my hero. Yeah. No. Right. It's just. It's ridiculous. Yeah. You know. I'll be. I'd, I'll be honest. I got the book and I thought there's some potential stuff in the future that might happen. And so I was like, well, I need to read this man. This man's arguments and be ready for it. And and I have to say, thoroughly. And I don't mean this in any braggadocious right. way. Or I'm not trying to be nasty, mean spirit, but thoroughly unimpressed. Hmm. Right. There is. You feel prepared. There's nothing to, to deal respond. with. It's just yeah. literally the most adolescent elementary level kind of arguments and it's just poor and my thought is only the judgment of god could allow something like this to happen that a man like this could kill this many babies a day and could be this uh well-known author and hero to this movement and it's nothing i mean a woman woman spoke in one of his things almost in tears of how grateful she was for his work and his talk and how it really moved her and i'm like wow there's really the bar is not set very high, guys. No. <laughs> so the church just needs to get involved. Not only do they approve, but they applaud. That's right. That's right. All right, guys. So again, thank you so much for um, everything you're doing uh, to make everything we do possible. So thank you very, very much. Thank you for those of you guys that have been with us again from the very beginning. Uh, everything you guys do uh, means so much for us uh, to us. So so thank you. Uh, let somebody know. Uh, by the way, uh, we are right now working on. Uh, Apologia Studios, the new website, it is actually underway. We're nearing the tail end of that work now. So Apologia Studios, the page itself is going to get revamped and it's going to be easy to access and just very, very pleasing to look at. And so lots of stuff happening there. Let somebody know about Apologia All Access. Tell them to sign up, guys. We have lots more really great content planned for this next year. Uh, I won't announce uh, something very special next, but it's underway right now. Discussions are underway for a really great new academy that I think will bless your life. So uh, that's happening. And uh, thank you. So enjoy the girl. Luke the Bear. Peace out. Marcus King Ginger. Thank you to um, our uh, to Gabe and to Carmen for all that they do uh, doing the cameras. You guys never see them or get to really acknowledge them, but they're here. And so thank uh, thank you guys for your work. And we'll catch you guys next week on Apologia TV.